Good evening to all of you. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank Good evening, you. sir. My PPT is visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Admission session. Yeah, is it visible properly? Yes, sir. Yeah, today we shall discuss Unit 6, Impact of Society on Education. In this particular unit, we will discuss what is society and what is the relationship between society and education. What is the impact of society on education? Importance of education for society. And next is importance of preschool education for social development. All the topics are overlapping because some topics we have discussed in previous slides, previous sessions, but we will discuss further one by one. So can anybody tell what is society? People living together in a community. Community is different thing. Anyway, good attempt. A society where a group of people share their uh, share of uh, common uh, uh, common uh, uh, culture history. Yeah. Mm. Good. Anybody else? Sir, people with different culture Society. living together, living together and share their opinions and uh, uh, helping each other in their daily life. Yeah. Living together, sharing the knowledge, sharing the experience, participating in the activities. This is a holistic group, which is known as society. And MacIver Page was a great sociologist. He has defined that society is the net of relations. Sambandhon ka jal hai samaj. Okay. So, if we see the definition and meaning of society, society is a group of people who share common ethics, cultural, historical, and governed by the same political structure. Same political structure means one uh, constitution on one rules and regulation is known as society. Basically, the uh, society world was originated from Latin words societas which means friendly association with each other society does comprise a system wherein people lives together as an organized community and there are two type of society if we define as per definition there are two type of society one is functional society and second is structural Sorry, definition. There are two definitions of society. 
वन डेफिनेशन बेस्ड ऑन फंक्शनल एंड सेकेंड बेस्ड ऑन स्ट्रक्चर in the functional point of view society can be defined it is a complex group in reciprocal relations interacting with each other enabling human being to carry on their thought and activities society thus may be group of religious person a group of family member people living in a village or a group people who perceive relationship among themselves society can be big and short basically family is also society and according to structural point of view society is the total social heritage of folk way folk lore moves and institutions institution of what habits sentiments ideas music literature scientific achievements traditions traditions also define that this is the society that no that is the uh, means if the particular society particular group having some kind of mastery of music then we say that yes this is the if you see the example of varanasi there were so many gharanas gharanas means there are society of um, various uh, instrumental um, music musical instrumental like uh, tabla vadak is a society and uh, sindur uh, santur santur vadak is a second society so it is a kind of examples of structure literature scientific achievements even traditional if we see the particular society if we go in the rural background their traditionals are different if we go the urban areas their traditionals are different from above two definitions we can conclude that society is basically both structural as well as functional organization it is a combination of both structural as well as functional so what is the linkage between society and education is there any linkage between society and education who decide which type of education should be given to our child anybody please who decide that society has to decide what kind of education should be given to our child i'm not talking a particular formal education i'm talking education holistic that may be formal education informal education or non formal education so that is society who decide which type of education should be given to their ward their uh, next coming generation and what is education education decide education uh, is as edu- the duty of education is this to uh, what should i say to inculcate the values of society in the coming generation to inculcate the what society has decided into the next generation transformation of knowledge so education basically education is a service which is provided by the society to its members either to itself and it is difficult to view society and education as independent of each other basically both are closely interlinked how both are co- closely interlinked the structure of education provided at various level and what should be the goal of education what should be the curriculum and what should be the methodology of uh, evaluation of educational outcomes all are determined by the agencies of society that's why i said society decide what should be 
learn and education decide how it should be perceived how it should be transformed to the next generation so both are linked education too has a role in the progress and continuous of the society whatever uh, society decide that is education only which transferred in next generation therefore society and its needs are dy dynamic you all are aware the different societies uh, are having different kind of needs since education is a powerful instrument for social change even you know education change every time as per the demand of society syllabus curriculum also change from time to time as per the demand of society if you say pre uh, independence that time macale education was there if we see post independence different kind of uh, institutions came into the existence for fulfilling the needs of the indian society so both are interlinked education as well as society both are interlinked now continuous on this topic society provides education which can be formal as we have we already learned which can be formal non formal or informal and we have already read that we have already discussed that informal education begin at home families communities peers and other which are the units of a society and this continues throughout the life of an individual education you know education is a lifelong process it's, it never ended while the society provides formal and non formal education it establishes and maintain schools for its young members and college colleague sorry college universities and other institution for higher learning so society samaj hi vidyalay kholta hai aur vidyalay mein jo curriculum hai structure hai wo bhi society decide karti hai aur jo learning outcomes hain ye hone chahiye that also decided by the society it also provides for non formal education to take care of mainly those who could not uh, participate in formal education or who could not uh, learn who could not uh, achieve their degree or their education and knowledge and most of the exam good example is ignu ignu is providing non formal education uh, other examples are uh, adult literacy programs also and distance education programs at secondary level you see nios is working and nios is the uh, nation wide body who provide this non formal education and uh, for higher education ignu is there so what is the impact of education in different ages if we see even before uh, independence there was uh, kind of yugas means uh, what would you say vedic yes vedic period vedic periods then buddhism period medieval period and in these times education system was different and it totally was based on their needs if we see the vedic period then vedic period uh, kind of uh, study of vedas and upanishad that time that uh, that were important even if we see the uh, different kind of tradition students came into the gurukula and first time when he came into the school and there was kind of uh, sanskar is known as uh, the upnayan sanskar and the student has to be uh, stay with uh, uh, their teachers in guru class that that was the kind of methodology and uh, the main uh, purpose of education was to learn uh, vedas and uh, upanishads upanishads and uh, some kind of uh, mastery in or skilling in this uh, for 
फॉर वार एंड लाइक धनुषवान एंड दिस युद्ध में जो काम आता था फॉर वार में जो काम आता उसके लिए उनको ट्रेन किया जाता था द मेन एंड वन वॉज ऑल्सो देयर टू क्रिएट और टू मेंटेन द वैल्यू सिस्टम so education was imparted at centers of learning and that center of learnings were called as gurukulas ashrams and parishads so that uh, when this this was the structure of uh, education in Ved- vedic period if you go in buddhism period so during the buddhism period education was institutionalized with great repute like like takshila was there you must have heard about takshila nalanda these were the kind of good education places for uh, higher learning in the period of buddhism and earlier gurukulas and ashrams was uh, converted into the sangs and you know uh, that time in vedic period sanskrit was the language and sanskrit uh, was the con- was considered kind of tough language that time and people used to uh, speak and uh, in day to day life pali and prakrit to so buddhism in the time of buddhism period the language was used for education pali and prakrit and that was the reason that that time education system was at kind of good level if we see uh, the pre primary or primary there was a book siddhu rastu siddhi rastu that was the kind of curriculum and uh, that wa- that children have to study uh, at primary level siddhu rastu was containing uh, that time mathematics and language and uh, kind of this geographical environment information about their surroundings if we see the medieval period medieval period uh, you know that time some institutions were developed named madrasas and maktabs some uh, earlier institutions named as this uh, ashram and gurukul was converted into the madrasas and maktabs and main purpose main object main aim of the medieval period was the to uh, learn or to study the quran hadith and arabian grammar logic and their language yani urdu and farsi farsi and uh, for higher education uh, some madrasas was given responsibility and ulama was the head of uh, institution ulama and uh, uh, the responsibility was given to the teacher were known as ulama and uh, this maulvi sahab so that that was the structure at the time of medieval uh, period if we see the british period before uh, independence you know the missionaries came from europe and propagated christianity along with the british this, regime but had played a very active roles in shaping the education system of that particular period various social reforms and educationists has realized that need of imparting western education especially its science education so as to liberate the mind of indians and modernize to modernize them and in this light macale has given his minutes in 1835 and that time education of that time was known as macale's education because he has given a kind of structure of indian education and based on that based on macale's recommendations there were uh, many change has been done in school structure curriculum even diversification diversification of education and concept even teacher training was also introduced 
and some free and compulsory education was also introduced for uh, marginalized group or some privileged group adult education did were came into the existence in the period of uh, british period if we see the post independence you know the macale education was <coughs> for some particular group or for some purpose you must have heard that that time of education uh, was kind of directive to be make a clerk only it was not that based on, based on that macale education then people were Uh, settled at the various good place no the purpose was the macale to create the human resource from indian but at the level of clerical so various criticism was there and but post dependence it was the challenge also for the uh, indians indian leaders because education system uh, inherited from british was having very serious kind of problems because as i said there was uh, education only for particular groups and then to create the particular kind of resource power and that leads to low literacy level that time even poor retention because um, most of the people were not uh, agree to read and or learn the education and after the post independence it was the big challenge to provide education to all segment of society even women also even uh, uh, marginalized group also even rural means equal same education should be provided to all the indian and it was also uh, made provision then if we see the rights of uh, citizenship it clearly mandated mandated that education should be give, opportunity should be given to all so after independence india has uh, initiated various uh, programs like universalization of elementary education adult education and also given uh, special thrust on uh, education in science and technology and for that various uh, national education plans were came 1952 that was known as mudaliyar commission 1964 kothari commission and 1960 uh, 1986 and thereafter uh, in 1992 program of action and right now we are in uh, under the umbrella of new education policy 2020 even in the indian constitution uh, there was special provision were given article 21 a that we have already discussed and article 45 we have already discussed no need to repeat again and again so what is the what are the importance of society on education education is there society is there but if we underline then what are the importance of society on education society ka role kya hai you may say it what is the role of society on education so it change means society change in the norm culture traditions belief customs once privilege in our society are the result of education education is only that which can be used for change of culture change of tradition change of beliefs by awareing the people society also provide education for fulfilling its aspiration such as following education does the work for preservation of culture and civilization it also utilize for development of culture and society thought reforms fulfillment of social needs aspiration by setting relevant goals the goals can be defined by the education only and designing the curriculum suitable for fulfilling the goal to conserve transmit and develop the existing knowledge based on various areas to promote and develop creativity citizenship and pride also in the individual that 
the uh, if it, we see the education system of india after educated we say in proud data i am indian to develop a workforce that can be and that can contribute to the economic growth as well as uh, being of the society if we conclude the preservation and transmission of culture from one generation to another generation is done through education only consequently the main mission of education is to preserve and culture the culture tradition and education also needs to conserve the past because of because it provide the foundation for renewal and innovation therefore knowledge is stored in culture in various forms such as tradition custom folklore stories folk song folk drama legends proverbs and myths also epics also a, a rich resource of our ancient knowledge and this role of education in conserving the past attainment in the direct contract to the present prediction to focus the curriculum on the future needs so there is a big role of society on education continuously if we see it is society provides pre school education and many societies consider consider that uh, providing early child care, edu care education as it is responsibility of uh, nation as well as state and you all are aware that pre schools provide a manly education to the children in early childhood stage and also to considerable extent care and it also uh, create a foundation pre school education create a foundation for primary level because child uh, learn basic knowledge skills good health and behavior in the pre education schools only so early child care education childhood care education provide a stimulating environment for physical intellectual linguistic social and emotional development of the child it prepare children for primary education but focus on the holistic development of the child it also provides children with the much needed and rich environment intellectual simultaneous simulation sorry and plenty of opportunities for socialization with the member of same age group yani peer group this is the next topic pre school education for improving social competency see social competency refer to personal person ability and that ability comes or start from the ground level that is pre education and importance of developing social competency during early childhood so many research suggest that children who do not have basic level of social competency by the age of 6 may have trouble with uh, relationship with family members as we all are aware and we have also discussed that pre education is the uh, root of not only primary education as well as further higher education so what are the uh, competency and uh, so developing the social competency a person social development start at birth even infant you must have, as you cite some example of abhimanyu and most children social skills increase rapidly during the pre school education so it is important to keep in mind that children of same age may not have the same level of social competency age group is same but uh, it is not uh, sure it is not uh, true that all the uh, age group child having same uh, social competency then how 
socialization can be done and it is a duty of parents and teacher should watch how the child interact with the family members with the friends with the neighbors with the classroom if we find if we find something then they should they should mentor they should guide us they, they should guide them they should uh, correct them so this process is known as socialization of child <laughs> otherwise after the time child will feel loneliness if you don't if teacher don't if parents don't if family members don't guide at the right time so this was the uh, unit 6 uh, pre educated it was based on basically society what is the role of society and different kind of society what type of education were given to the uh, child and in different kind different eras even vedas medieval and uh, pre independence post independence what kind of education structure was being used so if anybody has any questions please ask otherwise we move next okay actually there is a big work also today i have to complete my hall this one block so this is unit 7 what are the agencies of education we will discuss in this topic so today discussion is list the agencies of education what are the agencies of education and what is the significance of family as a agency family is also an agency school is also agency and community is also agency and what is the role of provide in education and what is the role of state because we have learned role of nation now what is the role of state in particular okay so agencies of education basically are formal and informal there are two type of agencies of education formal and informal agency formal includes that school college universities and in informal neighborhoods peer group teachers family members channels mass media even in present time social media also so these are the agencies of education next the agencies are also uh, can be defined that active and passive agency if we see the active agency always and passive it's totally depend on learner if you want to listen the radio then learning or knowledge will transfer if we stop the radio it will be stop same television and similarly newspaper so radio tv and newspaper are uh, are passive next is what is the role of family so we should discuss on this particular topic one by one what is the role of family in education so this is for you yeah one by one what is the role of family family should provide the, the children the good habit good food good habit teaching. one by one only good habit yeah please thank okay. you and any other family helps child to socialize socialize yes
Yeah, Mandeep. Are you able to unmute today? Good manners. Yes, of course. Oh, today you are also... Punctuality. Awesome. What one? Punctuality. Equality? Punctuality. Punctuality also, yes. It's family a can teach uh, the child to be responsible at home and responsible for what R to be a responsible person okay good yeah sir good uh, manners family has provide uh, encouragement family provides and support yeah hmm. Family can help child to take his own decision and do his own work uh, by himself, uh, become yes. Uh, independent. Yes, to make independent. Good. Sharing Sir, mandalki. good manners. Good manners, yes. It's a sharing mentality. Mandeep, you are raising head. Are you able to speak? Personal cleanliness, yes. So sharing mentality. Good. Rajeshwari, yes. Rajeshwari, are you able to say something? You can write on chat box. Protection, appreciation. Good. Respecting uh, family members. Exactly, good. Mm. Sharing mentality, yes. Yeah. Bhaskar. Hmm. Satichi Bhaskar. Please unmute yourself. Moral values, yes. Okay. So the family is considered as the oldest and fundamental unit of human society. And the role of home and parents in child development, which are followed. Relation of parents to child. Means it is a duty of home or family. They should teach what are the relation of the pi, uh, parents with the child. Even order of childbirth. He is your younger brother. He is your younger sister. He is your all kind of uh, kind of order, all kind of uh, this hierarchy, all kind of respect. These all should be aware to the child. Number of sibling, how many brothers, sisters, and how many other members in the family. Exact role of family is particular if we talk about education. That is providing first, first of all, providing balanced diet. First you give, first you provide, then you expect something. First, providing balanced diet, clothes, shelter, and other necessary things for their good health and general well-being. Making provision for physical exercise means there should be kind of alarm to aware that a child should get up child should get up ready for kind of physical exercise in the early morning. He should kind of move with their parents. The child should not walk and should not be busy in the uh, given task for a long time, for a long period. That you have rightly discussed that personal cleanliness cleanliness of home and surrounding it should also be teach by the family as well as school uh, this uh, school also but because 
we are discussing the role of family and it is a duty of it is a moral responsibility of the family members to make aware about their personal cleanliness cleanliness of home and surrounding and they should also motivate them please do something kind of cleanliness simple kindly uh, clean the table not bigger than development of intellectual and aesthetic sense and moral dimensions that you all have, have been discussed even linguistic development means their local language also proper vocabulary by using the socially accepted language sometime uh, child uh, speak some uh, socially unexpected language and it is a duty of family members to stop and to guide them this is not correct the right pronunciation right vocabulary is this arranging formal education opportunity if the child is at the age of 6 class then he should be in school it is the responsibility of family members providing enough care and attention to the child develop a kind of sense of belongingness sense of responsibility and encourage the child's sense of autonomy also this was the role of family but don't forget a teacher as a teacher you should also counsel the parents on the role of family and their duties on what their children so we all are uh, from school so what are the role what is the role of school for child education basically school in right time uh, we use the spellings of s c h w o l but earlier it was derived from kind of greek word that s k h o l e which means lesser anand society influence as you all are aware society influence are always a shape of school and school to have a strong impact on society some we have discussed in earlier some are here and school produce the future human resource and leader for the society to transform the society through their thought and works school also play an important role in beginning social change customs traditions and practices etc but how we can strengthen this relationship between school and society so it is the duty of school and school should frequently organize cultural program with the involvement of child and which can make it possible with the member of society even society members also be invited and participation from child side if possible from parent side as well as teachers side also the school should run kind of social welfare program for developing the adult literacy undertaking the campaigning for if you are in school when i was in navodaya vidyalaya samiti i was pgt mathematics in navodaya vidyalaya samiti and there was a tradition that every monday that should be kind of cleanliness campaign in the school and every class has to be inspect by the principal and teachers or kind of uh, this a particular group even evaluation also whosoever classroom find uh, best they awarded in the next assembly 
not only promote the classroom to uh, more cleanliness it also gives the uh, pride to the uh, student also yes my classroom came in the first in the cleanliness competition and because of this campaigning not only cleanliness health hygiene enhancing awareness about the health and hygiene even these uh, welfare program include education for all children also so if we talk about the community yes somebody said that uh, society is community community is a subset of course uh, society if the if particular community lives in a particular area in a group that is also society and davis in 1960 has defined that a community is a smallest territorial group <coughs> that can <coughs> embrass all aspects of social life means community has kind of different traditions different even language different culture different heritage if you talk about the reasons for establish, establishing pre pre schools so that is connecting the link with family and external world external world means our neighboring our even our peers even our uh, outside family that is school then it comes taluka state nation so all kind the connection of family and outside world that's why pre schools were established to make aware the child about or to link between two and to provide a kind of rich environment to learn this environment means clean space hygienic space under the supervision of trained teachers and promotion of social development you know that social development take place at high level in the school only after the family if we talk then state versus education what is the role of state in education and what is the role of education on state so state plays very important role for providing education like influence of state on education if we see if you see the state particular state education the education system is slightly different their curriculum their syllabus may be different state wise state wise curriculum and syllabus and their teaching methodology even their uh, evaluation process they may different even if you see the same level cbse and icsc their evaluation pattern is entirely different state some state has uh, started this rajiv gandhi sorry this is the uh, national uh, scheme rajiv gandhi national crutch scheme and it is the it is available in every district near to uh, this uh, pre school or pre primary school sarv shiksha abhiyan and somewhere it is known as education for all because sarv shiksha abhiyan and education for all both are linked education as a fundamental right it is a duty of state that state should provide education each and every child as it is a fundamental right so if we talk what are the positive impact state control of education and what are the negative impact first 
we discuss what are the positive as we said that education system in all state is slightly different means total overall control on education of the state only so if we talk positive state control will ensure universal compulsory and free education to all children of the certain age group children provide with, uh, with a minimum quantum of education will grow into the capable and dynamic citizens citizens imbued with social and national consequences the state unlike private agency does not have profit making motives and ensure the entry of qualified teacher and other staff into the system see if uh, there are so many state where beard is not compulsory even till now for pgt for lectureship so their eligibility criteria somewhere it may be relaxed and somewhere it may be high education of all children will be uniform conforming to the principle of equality because equality is also uh, this fundamental state fundamental rights under the uh, supervision of the state and the scheme of national education will be achieved successfully it is the duty of state whatever scheme is given by uh, central level at the national level it should be achieved successfully this is the responsibility of state but there are some negative impacts also education may be politicized curriculum as i said that curriculum may become a tool to attain the ends the political party in power seeks in such cases instead of acting as a welfare oriented agency the state may turn education into the instrument of indoctrination the second is in totalitarian state may develop a regimented system of education which jumps out uh, pupil program to serve the state blindly so this is the kind of negative also and this will limit original thinking free experimentation and expression also so this was the uh, state and education and what is the role it was covered in this topic and my next slide slide you that is unit number 8 is education culture and spirit of nationalism and this this particular topic we will discuss the role of education in preserving culture how it preserved the culture what are the function in reforming culture and what is the role of in promoting nationalism if you talk about characteristic of culture what is culture to make it interactive anybody please what is culture yeah what is culture example our tradition our tradition the way we follow we, the way we believe that all are comes from the culture okay good the rules and regulations made by the society uh, for the uh, well being of well-being. human being yeah yeah well being yeah good hmm Rajeshwari, Mandeep Kaur Bhatia, yes. You in chat box?
Por quê? The basic characteristics of culture are there are four, five, six. That culture is a system of knowledge shared by relatively large group of people comprising the society and it is the backbone of any race or any society. Cultural heritage is backbone of the any race of or any society. That culture in its broadest sense is cultivated behavior. Yes, it is cultivated behavior. And that is the totality of persons learned whatever he learned, whatever he accumulated experience and which is socially transmitted or more briefly behavior developed through social learning. Basically culture is a kind of uh, shadow of society. And it is learned rather than biologically inherited from the parents. A culture is a way of life of a group of people that include behaviors, beliefs, values, symbols, and these are accepted from the society. Culture is cumulative. As we discussed, this culture is kind of symbolic communication with the some symbols and that include that skill, knowledge, attitude, values and motives. Other culture is conservative and transitive also. Because culture consists explicit and implicit, both kind of behavior. Sometimes culture is diffusive. Culture is in constant change, culture change as per society or as per civilization change. So no nation has fixed culture traditions because culture change time to time and based on development and it can be modified. So what is the impact of culture on education? Knowledge of the language used commonly in the community is to be taught if culture is to be transmitted. Because culture transmitted through the communication and through the knowledge of language. And parents need to encourage children to speak their mother tongue because mother tongue is also kind of culture, at least at home. And it is our duty and it's good that NEP 2020 advocate that mother tongue, mother language should be promoted. Celebration of festivals, it also comes under the culture. As I told, there, there are some kind of gharanas like Banara, Banaras Gharanas having some kind of uh, specialization music. It also be inherited. Stories and poem culture uh, also can be preserved by telling stories and poems. Even arts, there are so many galleries where culture is live. So education and culture both are linked. 
if we talk then education and cultural reform because the duty of education to preserve the their cultural heritage even promote the cultural heritage you must have heard that vocal to local in india there were kind of places where their local culture was very strong very uh, kind of very beautiful but it was not known to all so this local to local has made good changes and some good cultural uh, activities came into the knowledge of the not only uh, india even world also and we have already discussed that education as a mean of developing nationalism it create the kind of uh, pride about their nationalism yes i am indian yes i am this education make man perfect you all are aware this is unit 9 contemporary challenge to education in the emerging indian society and in this particular topic what are the challenges to education in indian society and what are the challenges in particularly early childhood education in indian society and how these challenges can be overcome there are three topic in this particular unit these are the challenges to education in indian society see in 1950 india made a constitutional commitment to provide free and compulsory education to all children up to the age of 14 you all are aware but in spite of continued efforts it could not be achieved even till so many major uh, challenges are there in elementary education in primary education and all are linked with the early childhood education number 1 is access to education even today there is no access to education from various Uh, remote and very remote areas if we see the uh, jarwa community in uh, nearby this uh, sea area there are so many tribal community are there there is no proper access to our education if a student if child enrolled or admitted in the schools there is a issue of retention if 100% attendance is one day then it is not possible that it is it should be continued throughout the year some child take admission but they leave the school because of uh, their economic and uh, socio economic or their own problems so drop out cases are increasing day by day so this is also problem and it exist even today although government of india has started so many uh, this uh, schemes like district program of uh, uh, education and in some state there are some special schemes if we see the uh, andhra pradesh ekalavya scheme is there 
if we see the rajasthan then lok jumbish is there if we see the uttar pradesh then this dpep is there education for all is there in all over the india right to education act 2009 is also there but still we are facing these three access retention and drop out if you talk the main what are the main barriers to early child care education this is access as we have discussed in above in india many children do not have access to early child care education facilities and this is especially true for the children from the background backward society and remote areas and second is lack of holistic approach some of the early childhood interventions like ece lack a holistic approach and rather than creating catering uh, to all uh, round development of the children they are concerned mainly with the educational need of children there are some uh, anganwadis are there they are working good but for health and hygiene also there are some pre schools they are working for education also only so it should be the kind of holistic approach and it is lacking third is so the second is quality of education it is also not similar in all state or all districts and all levels of pre schools why because if we see the pre service courses offered by government and private and institutions their level is different and in service education programs also very less because teachers are busy in various activities they are engaged in various government uh, promotion schemes there are so many reasons but if we talk about the in service programs they are very less and it should be uh, increased if we want to achieve the gr as mandated by the new education policy or previous education policies early child care education you know there is a big demand of specialized teachers who can cater this big group 0 to 6 age group but the institutions are very less which provide this particular diploma or particular certificate if you see an ios is uh, giving this kind of training or diploma and second is ignu if we talk about the funding education require some funding also without funding how an organization or even ngo or any institution can achieve the goal of education so funding is also required you see there are so many scheme example dpp ssa rt eklavya lok jumbis but fund fund if you talk fund fund is very less the fourth is social cultural concerns also sometime parents are not ready to send their wards into the school sometime ex nearby schools is not available sometime the language of that particular uh, pre schools is not as per the uh, local areas so social culture concern also take important role in this particular so what are the need strengthening pre school education the major problem of pre primary education is that it is not accessible to all especially those who need it 
as we have discussed so many tribal areas are there so many backward areas areas are there it is not accessible to all as we think or as we perceive that no no we are doing well no there are so many areas where education especially pre primary education is not accessible second early child care education may be made as a fundamental right see uh, six on word it is a fundamental right from the age of 6 to 14 it is a fundamental right but 0 to 6 is not fundamental right and there is a urgent need to come out with contextually suited locally relevant innovative study and approaches and also straining the resources to fill this huge gap because there is a big gap and it should be covered by the innovative strategies and the working together and by using a holistic approach there is a need for experience based curriculum rather than book or yes you all aware even some uh, institutions are working in right direction that they are using the playway method while they teach the this particular group or this in particular pre primary education system as we have already discussed that aids are very less so government aid to private institution would be a welcome step otherwise private institution will impose the big fees on the parent and there is a need to expand pre school facilities also and provide quality pre school services facilities you all are aware that there should be a kind of uh, clean classroom clean surroundings clean washrooms a capacity of uh, classroom should be uh, very less 24 to 30 only and teacher should aware as every child with their name thank you so this is the about uh, block number to now we should have some kind of question answer or discussion should i ask or you are asking Uh, sir, I want to ask that uh, uh, till now, sir, I didn't get the uh, study material. I already contacted to the director of this, uh, uh, as far mentioned in the email, but uh, yeah. he said that uh, the uh, study material will come from Delhi, and mm. he sent me a, a supportive tracking link for that, but it is useless because it is showing zero 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 something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. See. Uh... although i am not right person to answer you this particular question but this is it is my advice i am also i am also using the material from e gyan course i also don't have the study material in print form so please go into the e gyan course and download our study material and it is very good and readable also till you received your study material definitely you will receive your study material but sometimes it's delay because of various reasons it dispatch from delhi and sometimes uh, post office also uh, yes i know you have paid for the books i know
so about this topic otherwise we shall meet tomorrow okay have a good day we shall meet tomorrow rajeshwari do you have any question Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.